we can describe benzene as being aromatic. Aromatic comes from the word aroma. So a long time ago, chemists realized that the oils isolated from some plants smell really nice. But over time, we realized that those aromatic compounds have structural similarities. So our chemistry definition of aromatic changed from it smells nice to it must have an uninterrupted cyclic cloud of pi electrons above and below the plane of the ring. Let's talk about what that means. The goal of this video is to enable you to look at a molecule and decide if it's aromatic. So I'm going to translate this definition to a list of three criteria. So our first criteria is that an aromatic molecule must be cyclic. So benzene is cyclic because somewhere in the molecule there are atoms that make a ring. An example of a molecule that is not cyclic is 1,3-butadiene. Nowhere in this molecule do you see a ring of atoms. Rule number two, we can have no sp3 hybridized atoms anywhere within the ring. This takes care of the part of the definition about uninterrupted cloud of pi electrons and the fact that the molecule needs to be planar or flat. In order to have an uninterrupted cloud of pi electrons, that means that each and every atom in the ring has to have at least one unhybridized p orbital. So sp2 and sp hybridization states are good, but in the case of sp3 hybridization, that atom would not have any unhybridized p orbitals, and therefore we would interrupt that cloud of pi electrons. So let's look at benzene. Each and every carbon in benzene is sp2 hybridized. Each carbon is bonded to three other atoms, two carbons and a hydrogen. So each and every one of these carbons has a p orbital that is perpendicular to the plane of the molecule. This is uninterrupted, meaning every single one of these can overlap. This is what we want. So if an atom is sp3 hybridized, it's going to have four electron clouds around it. So you would want to count the total number of other atoms bonded to it and the total lone pairs of electrons that are localized around that particular atom. And if that number is four, then it's sp3 hybridized. So let me give you two simple examples. The first one is methane. Methane is a carbon bonded to four different hydrogens. So specifically, this carbon in the center is sp3 hybridized. If you count the total number of electron clouds, it is four. One, two, three, four. Another example would be the oxygen in water. So oxygen has two lone pairs of electrons on it, and it is bonded to two hydrogens. So if we count the total number of electron clouds around this oxygen, one, two, three, four. We are counting both electrons in bonds and electrons in lone pairs. So this carbon and this oxygen are both sp3 hybridized. Now let's look at this molecule. This is 1,3-cyclopentadiene. It looks fairly similar to benzene, but we are missing a double bond and we have two extra hydrogens. Let's try to figure out the hybridization state of each of these six carbons. So carbons like to make a total of four bonds. So any of these carbons where you see a single bond and a double bond, there is one bond missing from the line drawing, and in line drawings we can always assume that's a hydrogen. So I am going to draw the hydrogens that are just implied. So four of these carbons each have one hydrogen bonded to them. So these are our sp2 hybridization state. Each of these carbons is bonded to three other atoms, and there are no lone pairs of electrons on them. So these are all sp2. This is what we want in order to have the chance of aromaticity. However, we have two more carbon atoms up here, and these are a little bit different. These two carbon atoms each have two single bonds to other carbon atoms. If carbon likes to make a total of four bonds, that means these both have two hydrogen atoms bonded to them. So these two carbon atoms, this looks a lot more like our carbon and methane. We have carbon that is bonded to four other atoms. So these are both sp3 hybridized. 
and this messes up aromaticity. This molecule is not going to be aromatic. So if we start to consider which of these carbon atoms have the unhybridized p orbital, it's only going to be the sp2 hybridized carbon atoms. So if I start drawing in my unhybridized p orbitals, it's only going to be in four of the six of these carbon atoms. So this is interrupted. This is not all the way around the ring. There is at least one atom that does not have this p orbital. Rule number three, our molecule must obey Huckel's rule. So Huckel's rule says that our number of pi electrons needs to be equal to 4n plus 2, where n is an integer. So if n is an integer, that means that it could be equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. It has to be a whole number. So if we plug the integers into this equation, 4n plus 2, that means that in order to be aromatic, our number of pi electrons could be equal to 2, 6, 10, 14, and so on. Keep adding multiples of 4 to this number. Now this is a great rule. This is a derivation of molecular orbital theory. And molecular orbital theory deals with what these pi electrons are doing. Are they in bonding orbitals, non-bonding orbitals, anti-bonding orbitals? I can make a complete long standalone video about molecular orbital theory all by itself. But the great thing about Huckel's rule is that you can decide if something is aromatic by using Huckel's rule without putting all the thought into understanding molecular orbital theory. So you need to be able to identify pi electrons, count the total number of pi electrons, and see if that number is equal to 4n plus 2, where n is an integer. Let's apply Huckel's rule to these three molecules, then we're going to switch to some more difficult example problems. So, all three of these are cyclic, so they all meet rule number one. None of these carbons are sp3 hybridized. You are seeing alternating double and single bonds everywhere. These are all sp2 hybridized carbons. So all of these carbons and all three molecules have an unhybridized p orbital. So what we are left with here is Huckel's rule. If these meet Huckel's rule, they are aromatic. If they don't meet Huckel's rule, they are not aromatic. So we need to count the number of pi electrons. That means you need to be able to identify the number of pi electrons. Pi electrons are in p orbitals. I do have a video about the difference between sigma bonds and pi bonds, and any of those electrons in pi bonds are electrons that we can count here. But basically, you do not count the very first bond between any two atoms. So the electrons that I just drew in orange here, we are not counting those. What we need to count are the number of electrons in the additional bonds. So this molecule has two double bonds, each with two electrons. Those are the electrons that we need to count. So two bonds, each with two electrons, two times two is four. This has four pi electrons. This does not meet Huckel's rule. We can have two pi electrons, or we can have six. We can't have four. This is not aromatic. Now, next molecule is benzene. You all recognize benzene as the poster child for aromaticity, so you probably all know the answer, but let's still just practice counting pi electrons. So I am not counting electrons in the sigma bonds. So I am not counting the electrons that I'm drawing so far in orange. These are the very first covalent bond between any two atoms. I am counting the additional electrons in the multiple bonds. So one, two, three. There are three bonds that we need to consider, each with two electrons. Three times two is six. So here we have six pi electrons. Six does meet Huckel's rule. 4n plus two is six, 1n equals one. So this is aromatic. Now let's go to this molecule. Same deal. I am not counting sigma electrons. I am not counting electrons in the very first bond between any two atoms. I am counting electrons in the multiple bonds. So I am counting electrons in blue. 
we have four double bonds, each with two electrons. Four times two is eight. Eight does not match Huckel's rule. We can have six, we can have 10, we cannot have eight. So this is not aromatic. So out of these three, only benzene is aromatic. Let's do some more difficult practice problems. This is cyclopentadienyl cation. Let's decide if it's aromatic. So rule number one, it should be cyclic. And here we are seeing five atoms in a ring. So this matches rule number one. Rule number two, there should be no sp3 hybridized atoms anywhere in the ring. So four of these five carbons are pretty straightforward. For these five carbons, in the line structure, you are seeing a single bond and a double bond and no charge. Carbons like to have a total of four bonds. So all four of these carbons are bonded to one hydrogen. All four of these carbons are bonded to a total of three atoms. These are all for sure sp2 hybridized. This cation is a little bit trickier. The fact that we have a positive charge here means that that carbon is kind of unhappy. When I say carbon likes to have a total of four bonds, that's its preference. It doesn't always get what it wants. This positive charge means we are actually missing a hydrogen here. And this carbon also has a total of three other atoms bonded to it. So all five of these are sp2 hybridized. Now, a different version of rule number two that you might have heard someone say is that the entire ring system should be conjugated. That rule is also good, but I often see students applying that rule a little bit incorrectly. So usually the very first quick and easy definition of conjugation that a student hears is that there should be alternating single and double bonds, single, double, single, double, single. And they look at a molecule like this and they think, that's not conjugated because we have two single bonds in a row. This actually is conjugated because that shortcut definition of conjugation doesn't paint the whole picture. The true definition of conjugation is that all of the atoms need to have that unhybridized p orbital so that those p orbitals can all overlap. And these all do have the unhybridized p orbital even this cation at the top. So if you take into account resonance structures of this ion, that positive charge is actually delocalized throughout the entire ring. So all of these p orbitals do overlap. This is in fact conjugated. Now, number three, let's apply Huckel's rule. So total number of pi electrons. We are not counting the first bond between any two atoms in the ring. We are counting electrons in the multiple bonds. So we have two double bonds, each with two electrons. Two times two is four. So this has a total of four pi electrons. That does not meet Huckel's rule, so this is not aromatic. This is cyclopentadienyl anion, now with a negative charge and a lone pair of electrons. And determining whether or not it is aromatic is much more difficult than the previous problems. Let's try to apply our criteria and see how far we get. First, is it cyclic? Yes, that one's always straightforward. Rule number two, there need to be no sp3 hybridized carbons. Four of these five carbons are straightforward. You have seen this same situation in lots of molecules. These carbons are bonded to a total of three other atoms, no lone pairs of electrons. Those four carbons are all for sure sp2 hybridized, and they have an unhybridized p orbital. This carbon at the top is where a lot of people start going wrong. So line structure doesn't show it, but this also has a hydrogen bonded to it. What I told you earlier about identifying something as sp3 doesn't always work when resonance structures are involved. This looks like it's sp3. You are seeing this carbon bonded to three other atoms and a lone pair of electrons on it. That's four charge clouds. But resonance structures are involved here. This negative charge is equally shared by all five of these carbon atoms. This is actually still sp2 hybridized. That means all five of these carbons have that unhybridized p orbital 
and this does meet rule number two. Let's also apply Huckel's rule. So you know by now that we count the four electrons in the double bonds. The lone pair of electrons, these do reside in that unhybridized p orbital. So this does have a total of six pi electrons, and therefore it is following Huckel's rule. It is aromatic. Now, if you want me to make future videos where I better explain resonance and what it does to hybridization states, or whether or not you count lone pairs of electrons as pi electrons, let me know in the comments down below.